Thank you. Very good morning. Malaysia and from India. Welcome to the second day of India ASEAN uh, Pharma Business Meet, which we had. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have started with Vietnam on day one, and day two we are uh, the, doing it with Indonesia. So we are joined by 112 delegates from overseas as well as 30 delegates from Indonesia and 57 companies from India today. We are happy to see such kind of participation with the support of embassy and the uh, GP pharmacy. Sir, I take this opportunity to welcome uh, the dignitaries present today. His Excellency, Mr. Manoj Kumar Bharti, Ambassador of India to Indonesia, Ms. Nova Amalta, Coordinator, Generic Medicine Registration, Drug Department, BPOM, Mr. F. Tito Kusnadi, Chairman GP Pharmacy, Mr. Vincent of GP Pharmacy, and Mr. Narayanan. Sir, I take this uh, India Indonesia Pharmaceutical Business Meet. Now, with this, I would like to welcome, uh, I, I request Mr. Ravi Uday Baskar to kindly give his address on Indian Pharmaceutical industry meeting global needs. Sir, I welcome you. Thank you, sir. Good morning, His Excellency, Mr. Manoj Kumar Bhakti, Ambassador of India to Indonesia, uh, Ma'am Nova Imelda, Mr. Tirto, and Mr. Vincent and V. Narayanan, Council uh, Embassy of India. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, really, it gives me immense pleasure to be part of this engagement. And uh, I'm also privileged to talk about the capabilities of Indian pharmaceutical industry in a very brief uh, way. So uh, at the outset, uh, Particularly, uh, the Indian pharmaceutical industry is popularly known as pharmacy of the world. We are exporting drugs to more than 200 countries. We are always uh, in the forefront in fighting against uh, the dreaded diseases. Uh, whenever there is, a, uh, there is a pandemic, we are always ready and uh, providing uh, quality drugs at affordable price. So more than 20, 25 years back, we are responsible in saving the hundreds of millions of population from the dreaded diseases like uh, uh, HIV, malaria, and tuberculosis. And at the same time, we are not only providing quality and efficacious drugs, we are also providing uh, at a very affordable price. So this, uh, this, this is the, the strength of Indian uh, pharmaceutical industry. You are also aware of that, you know, India uh, is having highest number of uh, US FDA approved facilities and 55% uh, of our drugs are going to highly regulated markets. Uh, you are uh, aware of that, what are the regulated markets? They are not only regulated in terms of uh, regulations, they are, they are uh, economically strong and uh, their health indicators are also at a very high level more than 55 percent were exporting to those countries out of that 35 percent to north america and uh, and 17 percent to africa and uh, and um, uh, 15 percent to europe asean is our fifth largest uh, exporting uh, destination so in the financial year uh, 1920 we exported uh, uh, 20.6 billion us dollars worth of drugs to different countries Particularly um, uh, uh, during the pandemic, so India supplied the drugs like uh, hydroxychloroquine, paracetamol, and some antivirals, which are used in the treatment of uh, COVID to more than 150 50 countries. So we, we recorded almost 7.5% positive growth. Uh, very the, the bright spots, particularly in the financial year 2021, is that. So we, we already exported uh, 19.6 billion US dollars worth of drugs at 12% positive growth within 10 months. 
so it's 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 amazing actually nobody expected that you know particularly these logistic issues and uh, and uh, lockdowns and all these things you know we expected that you know something is not very uh, good is going to happen but it was surprise not only to the pharmaceutical industry and also to the entire world that you know we 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 are going to touch uh, 25 billion in the financial year uh, 2021 with uh, i'm expecting it will touch more than uh, 14% growth so in the recent past actually if you go back to uh, uh, 18 19 and uh, 16 17 and uh, 17 18 so this growth is phenomenal particularly during unconducive environment and uh, due to this covid and all so we we are we are moving very fast and we are giving so many answers to the covid so in the vaccine front also you are all very very much aware of that indian companies are in the forefront earlier we used to supply vaccines 70 percent of our who uh, requirement is from uh, india we are known for producing the the vaccines which are needed for uh, immunization uh, the program nobody expected that india will uh, rise to the occasion and develop a vaccine to the uh, to covid 19. So, uh, for example, Bharat Biotech is an Indian company in collaboration with ICMR has developed an indigenous vaccine, Covaxin, and now uh, and the other company who are the largest uh, um, manufacturer of vaccines, Serum Institute of India, in collaboration with uh, AstraZeneca and Oxford, they also developed the vaccine. Now both these vaccines are going throughout the world and we, we have already exported to more than 75 countries so five more companies are particularly working on uh, uh, the vaccines and they are at different uh, stages of uh, clinical trials and one more good news is that you know the Bharat Biotech is uh, uh, work uh, has submitted their uh, proposals to drugs control journal of india for uh, to initiate clinical trials uh, for nasal vaccine so globally there are only four companies are working on the nasal vaccine for covid 19 so this is a very 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 good news particularly on the vaccine front so it's not only good news to the indian population it's going to be a very good news to the entire global uh, population to fight against this uh, covid 19 so I, I'm coming back to the Indonesia. Indonesia and India are very closely connected and, uh, and our embassy also, particularly during pandemic. Embassy is always in touch with us and uh, our ambassador as well as Mr. Narayan and regularly on uh, updating the pharmacy as well as government of India on the developments. And uh, they are very uh, proactive in uh, taking it forward. And in that process, um, the last year, 1920, actually it was uh, quite disappointing uh, that, you know, our exports to Indonesia was only 106 million with minus 25% growth. Then we are a little bit disappointed. But if you see uh, in this financial year, 2021, particularly in these uh, 10 months, we have already crossed 1.7 uh, million US dollars with 58% positive growth. We no, nobody expected that, you know, minus 25 will go to 58 percent uh, positive growth. I'm very much thankful to the Indian Embassy as well as uh, the associations from Indonesia in uh, in, in, in taking this uh, uh, the, the, the forward. It's also very interesting and it is uh, good to the Indian pharmaceutical industry. The foreign direct investment earlier, it was 85 percent now. The Indonesian government has made it 100 percent. This this will encourage the Indian pharmaceutical industry to collaborate uh, with uh, with Indonesia. Indonesia is uh, very strong uh, in vaccine front also. So the the India and Indonesia can work on this uh, area, particularly on the vaccine side and the APIs. This is going to be very helpful to the Indian uh, pharmaceutical industry. So with this, uh, I would like to uh, uh, conclude my talk once again. I'm very much thankful to His Excellency, 
for inviting uh, the FDA Indonesia to be part of this uh, discussions and uh, and uh, GP Pharmacy is always uh, closely working with us, um, Vincent and Tito. They always uh, present in all the programs organized by Pharm uh, Pharmaxil and they're good friends to Pharmaceuticals Export Promotion Council of India. I I, I hope the coming uh, few hours are going to be very helpful to the to the delegates uh, from Indian side as well as uh, as well as from the Indonesian side and particularly the the, the presentation from uh, Ma'am Nova Imelda is going to be very useful. Uh, with this, uh, thank you and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you very much, sir, for the brief on how India is meeting uh, the global needs, pharmaceutical global needs. Sir, I take this opportunity to invite His Excellency Mr. Manoj Kumar Bharti, Ambassador of India to Indonesia, to kindly give his inaugural remarks on India-Indonesian cooperation and way forward. Sir, I look forward to hearing from you, sir. We welcome you to give your remarks. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, let me welcome all the delegates as well as Ibu Nova Imelda from the Indonesian uh, side to this gathering. Her presence here is of immense importance uh, because we need to hear from her about the Indonesian perspective on this issue. I would like to say that this meeting is, is taking place after a gap of two years and the backdrop has been the COVID related pandemic as well and uh, what we have been seeing in the last almost a year is that it has disrupted the entire working of um government private business people's lives and everything fortunately with the coming of vaccines in use people are full of hope that probably the next half of 2021 or at the most 2022 will begin a normal operation for all of us uh, coming to the pharmaxil and pharmaceutical industry, India and Indonesia have similar climate and also we have both very dense population. All of you know that India is the second largest uh, country in terms of population and Indonesia is the fourth largest. Jointly, we own nearly 1.6, more than 1.6 billion people. There is a great opportunity for uh, a cooperation in, by, in, in a pharmaceutical business just to deal with such a huge population in our two countries. It has already been mentioned that India has established itself as a global manufacturing and research hub of man, uh, pharmaceutical products, a large raw material base and the availability of the skilled workforce has given the industry a definite competitive advantage in India. India is also the largest supplier of generic medicines globally, with 20% of global export volume, especially for controlling hypertension, diabetes, and heart disease. 
30% of pharmaceutical raw materials supplied to Indonesia comes from India. The, law, uh, the low cost of uh, production and increasing expenditure on R&D, uh, where Indian pharma industry has invested 8.8% of sales, has led to a competitive pharma exports, which reached US dollar 20 billion in the year 2019 and 20, and it's likely to reach 25 billion in the current financial year. When I came to Indonesia, and a bit before that, I was told about unusually high prices of pharmaceutical products and in general health services in Indonesia. And that is when this quest started to find out what the reason is, how we can help in bringing cost of normal pharmaceutical products to a reasonable level so that people in Indonesia are not uh, uh, kind of put to inconvenience the way it is now. I have noticed that before coming to Indonesia, I had gone my uh, uh, PCR test done in India. The cost of PCR uh, test in India is almost five times less of the PCR tests being done in Indonesia. And the almost similar thing goes for almost all medicines that one needs to purchase. There is a need for uh, understanding what is happening in Indonesia in the pharmaceutical sector and in what way India can collaborate. Um, India is willing to partner with Indonesia for supply of bulk drugs in which uh, area it is ideally poised being the largest number of FDI approved drugs and one of the largest suppliers of drugs to the US. India would be happy to explore possibilities for cooperation with BPKS in generics and APIs to enable bring quality drugs at affordable price to the common man in Indonesia. Revelation of drugs in Indonesia takes up to 365 working days. If Indonesia could identify two to three categories of most used drugs and facilitate its easy entry from India by easing regulatory issues, this would save a lot of funds which would be diverted for infrastructure development in Indonesia. Here, there is another point that I would like to mention, as was mentioned by the earlier speaker, that uh, many of these drugs are getting into very regulated markets all over the world. There are many countries where, let's say, a, a regulation um, of registration in US or European Union is accepted for an easy registration process. I would very much like to request Indonesia to uh, take note of certain specific life-saving and normal use drugs in Indonesia, which could be given uh, these kind of fast track registration process. And this is only basically to provide more solace to people, common man, common people in Indonesia. We have noted the recent regulation under the omnibus law, which has opened up 100% foreign ownership in pharma sector. I take this as a recognition by the in Indonesian government of the necessity to give more, uh, more freedom and more opportunity for uh, pharma sectors and, and, and products and investment. It is very much welcome, and I encourage um, all bureaucrats in, in Indonesia, all decision makers in Indonesia, to provide further uh, ease of doing business, ease of registering drugs, drugs ease of uh, making investment in the pharmaceutical sector in India. Indian companies can also explore setting up of manufacturing units of active pharmaceutical ingredients, APIs, 
to augment the in Indonesian health insurance scheme. It may, however, be pointed out that as per extent regulation, API are allowed duty-free import into Indonesia from many countries, including China, which poses considerable risk for every for the very existence of new manufacturing units. If, some, if somebody wants to invest in API in Indonesia, government requires to give enough incentive for the investor so that they can compete with these kind of duty-free imports or low-duty imports. That is one very important point to ponder. As per BPS statistics, 30% of pharmaceutical raw materials supplied to Indonesia comes from India. However, given the size of Indonesian pharmaceutical market, which in 2021 is about 10 billion US dollars, there is immense scope of Im to improve upon the existing level of engagement in finished formulations, APIs, etc. Indian suppliers, Indian industry still has a very small, if not minuscule, share of this pharmaceutical industry in Indonesia market. In 2021, Indonesia spent 6.2% of its GDP, which is almost $11.6 billion, in healthcare expenditure, of which 60% uh, was spent on the treatment of five major diseases, cardiovascular, cancer, diabetes, TB, and malaria. There is ample opportunity for cooperation with Indian pharma industry in these areas for significant reduction in costs for the average consumer in Indonesia. I will once again request the decision makers in Indonesia to look at these kind of what I call low hanging fruits. We can catch some of these things. It will help the common person in Indonesia a lot. I express my confidence that this particular meet will be giving a fillip to B2B linkages in pharma sector and wish this business meet all success. I hope this uh, process of interaction with the Indonesian authorities and business community will be very useful for the Indian pharmaceutical industry. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, His Excellency, uh, for uh, your address and uh, yes, uh, the, uh, the cooperation way forward. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, now I invite uh, Ms. Nova Amanda, Coordinator of Generic Medicines Registration, to kindly give her special address on policy date updates on drug registration. Ma'am, I invite you to kindly give your address.
Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, delegates from Indonesia and India. Uh, Honorable Her Excellency, Mr. Manoj Kumar Bharti, the Ambassador of India to Indonesia. Honorable Mr. Tirto Kusnadi and Mr. Vincent the, from the GP Pharmacy Indonesia. And then Mr. Rali Krishna and Mr. Rafi Uday Baskar from the Pharmamex, Pharmaxil. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to convey Ms. Rizka apologize that she cannot attend this important meeting due to the other assignment. And uh, with this, and then we say thank you to the organizing committee to be able to arrange this meeting. So, in this occasion, I would like to present about the policy updates on drug registration in Indonesia. Uh, this my presentation uh, can be up now. Uh, organizing committee. Anhat, please share, uh, the, share the presentation, Thank you. Uh, in this occasion, I would like to present about the policy updates on the drug registration in Indonesia. Uh, next slide, please. This is the outline of my presentation. Uh, first, about the introduction and the pre market control and then emergency use authorization. Next. The introduction. Next. This is the legal framework about the but the poem is the first is the presidential decree of number 80 2017 regarding uh, regarding Indonesia FDA to strengthen the badan POM's regulatory function in law enforcement and then presidential instruction number 3 2017 regarding the drug and food control effectiveness improvement and then regulation of the head of the uh, Indonesia uh, FDA number 26 2017 on the organization and business process uh, of the blood and pump, and then regulation of the head of NIDFC number 11, 2018, on classification criteria of technical implementation unit in blood and pump, uh, regulation of the head of the uh, Indonesia FDA number 12, 2018, on the organization and technical implementation unit in, uh, in, in, in Indonesia FDA. The, the, the vision is to provide safe uh, high quality and competitive food and medicine to create an advanced of range, independent and having character based on mutual cooperation. Next slide. This is the drug uh, regulatory framework in Indonesia. Uh, drug regulatory framework in Indonesia cover both pre- and post-market control starting from the time when the drug is under development until the product is distributed to the market. This approach is in line with the WHO and RA global benchmarking tools for national regulatory authority. For pre-market control, Indonesia FDA has the function for conducting drug evaluation for marketing organization, which includes evaluation of efficacy and safety quality and product information and ensuring good manufacturing practices implementation. Uh, for post-market control, Indonesia FDA has function for conducting inspection of drug manufacturing, 
distribution and services facilities for monitoring GMP and good distribution practices compliance. Sampling and testing, including lot release for vaccine, drug labeling, and advertisement control, uh, including uh, pharmacovigilance and special for vaccine. We control uh, adverse effect following the immunization. Uh, next slide, please. This is the about the pre-market control. So next. According to the regulation, uh, all medicine marketed in Indonesia should be uh, applied for registration to obtain uh, marketing authorization. Uh, Indonesia FDA has been mandated for the drug registration process in Indonesia. The objective of drug registration is to protect public, public health toward unexpected risk medicine by providing assurance of the quality, safety, and efficacy of medicinal product marketed in Indonesia through the evaluation in the quality, safety, and efficacy of the product. This is the legal provision. Is uh, first is the health law number thirty six two thousand seven uh, two thousand nine, the MOH decree number ten ten two thousand eight on drug registration, and the regulation of the head of the Indonesia FDA number twenty four two thousand seventeen on criteria and drug registration procedure. And the addendum of the Indonesia uh, head of the Indonesia FDA uh, 24 uh, 2017 is number 15 2019 about the acceleration, and then the recent one is number 27 2020 about the emergency use authorization. Next slide, please. So, Directorate of the Drug Registration has three main functions in drug regulatory system, which are uh, clinical trial uh, authorization, drug registration and evaluation, and then special access scheme. Uh, next, please. All the registration uh, in Indonesia is already uh, using the electronic registration system. Uh, is an online registration system that used for the registering drugs uh, to Badan POM. And uh, in, in increase, increasing public services in the registration process for drugs and biological products, it's become more effective, efficient, fast, easy, and transparent. And during this pandemic uh, situation, this online registration is really helpful for uh, everybody. So everyone can uh, register and can uh, track uh, their uh, registration uh, through online. Next, please. And then this uh, registration can be using the many multi-platform, can use the PC, uh, tab, and then even your uh, cell phone. So it can be accessed uh, everywhere and every time. Next. Uh, the criteria for drug evaluation is uh, quality, safety, and efficacy. The evaluation uh, for quality is based on evaluation quality data of active substance and finished product, as well as the compliance uh, with the current GMP. The evaluation for safety and efficacy is based on evaluation of non-clinical and clinical studies uh, the summary of evaluation will be reflected in the product information and labeling. Therefore, the content of information should be complete, objective, and clear to ensure rational use of medicine. Next slide. As I mentioned that Badan, uh, Badan POM conduct the oversight of clinical trials for drug registration. There are two types of oversight of clinical trials, uh, which are first through the IND mechanism, and second, through the clinical trial application. In this uh, IND mechanism, we provide guidance and consultation for pharmaceutical industry, as well as monitoring and evaluation the result of each of study conducted in each stage of drug development. Therefore, the IND activities involving multidisciplinary expertise in the integrated uh, evaluation process. In the clinical trial application, uh, Badan POM oversight a clinical trial by only reviewing clinical trials uh, documentation. The output for both mechanism of clinical trial oversight is the approval for conducting the clinical trial. 
During the clinical trial implementation or process, uh, we conduct the GCP inspection to ensure the compliance of the conduct of clinical trial with the GCP standard. Uh, next slide, please. This is about the special access scheme. In Indonesia, uh, there are two institutions that are uh, 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 in charge for the special access scheme. Uh, so, in special circumstances, drugs without marketing authorization are allowed to be imported and used for the following purposes. So, for the Ministry of Health, they in charge for the special use drug for personal for personal use with responsible doctor, except for vaccine and biological product and drugs for urgent uh, national interest, donation except for vaccine and biological product, and then in vitro uh, reagent used for research and development. So for Indonesia FDA, we in charge for the drugs or drug substance, including biological product used in research and development for drug registration. Second, uh, biological product, including uh, vaccine for personal use, for personal use with responsible doctor, drugs for urgent national interest and donation. So for all the biologic, biological product, the special access scheme is uh, under the Indonesia FDA. And for drugs, uh, including uh, drugs for clinical study and bioequivalent study. Next slide. Uh, the emergency use authorization. Next slide, please. Following the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the Indonesian FDA has revised the regulation on drug registration by using issuing the Indonesian FDA regulation number 27, uh, 2020 by adding emergency use authorization, which is an approval for the use of medicine and vaccine in a public health emergency situation for those that have not yet obtained marketing authorization or for those that have that have obtained marketing authorization for other use or indication. The EUA is not a marketing authorization. The Indonesian FDA accelerate the registration and importing license timeline, which include reduced timeline for the pre-registration for, for from uh, 40 working days uh, to become six hours and then reduce timeline for new drugs and biological from 300 working days, uh, be, uh, vary from 100 to 300 working days based on a risk assessment to 20 working days. And reduce timeline for genetic registration from 150 working days to five working days. Uh, and then the, 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 the reduce timeline for importing license from eight hours to two hours. Next slide, please. Uh, the EUA, uh, the emergency use authorization could be issued for the medicine and vaccine which fulfill the following criteria. First, the condition of the disease has been determined by the government as a public health emergency. Second, there, there is sufficient scientific evidence regarding the safety and efficacy aspect of drugs to prevent, diagnose, or treat the disease. The third is the quality of the product meets the established standards and comply with the current GMP. The benefit is greater again the risk, risk benefit analysis based on a non-clinical and clinical drug review for the proposed indication. And the last is the no adequate and approved adequate alternative for diagnosis, prevention, or treatment of the disease. Next slide. In this regulation, uh, EUA is issued with several post approval responsibilities for the EUA uh, holder, which are requires to continue the clinical study developments or conduct the clinical trials, the clinical study in Indonesia to ensure the safety and efficacy for, uh, for the intended uh, indication. And then second is the limited use and distribution. Third, given the profit, uh, given the even with the requirements to continue a clinical trial and conduct strict pharmacovigilance uh, monitoring. Uh, each uh, each uh, emergency use authorization shall be completed with a vaccine for healthcare professional and patient leaflet. The Indonesia FDA could review the, the emergency use authorization that has been issued based on the current data, which could be resulted in AUA revocation or marketing authorization. Next slide, please. 
in the process of emergency use authorization uh, of the medicine and vaccine, there are flexibilities and acceleration given by Baden Powell. For the AUA submission, it is allowed to conduct rolling submission. The applicant can submit dossier in a wave of application according to the availability of data. Second, the timeline of evaluation maximum, maximum 20 working days after complete submission. The evaluation process will be started since the first submission. Evaluation process substantively the same with the normal process that follow the established standard of evaluation for quality, safety, and efficacy. The evaluation is also involving the National Committee for Drug Evaluation and ad hoc expert to develop recommendation for decision making. The expedition uh, of evaluation process uh, the expedition of the evaluation process is achieved by mobilizing more evaluators to evaluate a single submission uh, for AUA. So we we uh, prioritize the evaluation of the product for emergency use authorization. For the emergency use uh, authorization, it is possible to have flexibility in the requirement of data as the development study may still under process. For instance, the stability data could be evaluated by having a minimum three months of the real time and accelerated of stability study. For the clinical data, we could consider the application with at least interim of phase three clinical study report for evaluation of efficacy of COVID-19 vaccine. Next slide, please. The pre-market control of COVID-19 vaccine is performed by process evaluation of quality control documents and good manufacturing uh, practice inspection. Evaluation of the quality control documents involve uh, control of the raw material and then control of the API manufacturing. Uh, antigen bulk characterization, control of antigen bulk, control of antigen box packaging material, antigen box stability. And then material and manufacturing process of finished vaccine products consists of vaccine formulation, control of vaccine product manufacturing, control of excipient, control of the final vaccine bulk, control of vaccine products packaging material, and then stability of the vaccine products. Uh, next slide, please. The quality requirement of GMP compliance of the AUA drug and vaccine uh, is basically the same with the regular or normal approval, provided uh, the flexibility uh, is only in the form of the accelerated of the real-time study of minimal two pilot pages for the at least three months and the um, process validation report of pilot scale with commitment of three first commercial pages validation report. And the assurance of GMP compliance is still mandatory as a normal registration. Next slide, please. To obtain full stationary, this is the requirements of the vaccine registration. To obtain full statutory approval of marketing authorization according to the regulation, uh, comprehensive evaluation of the quality document, preclinical, and clinical data should be done. Evaluation of the quality. Uh, Include the sorry, I think it's already the uh, well, evaluation of the quality data include the active uh, active ingredients of vaccine, control of starting material, manufacturing process, active ingredients, bulk uh, bulk matter bulk uh, active ingredient bulk, packaging materials, and stability of active ingredient bulk vaccine product, formula, including formulas, control of excipient, uh, formulation, vaccine products, packaging materials, stability of the vaccine products. Evaluation of safety and efficacy is carried out through the evaluation of preclinical and clinical data. Preclinical data consists of uh, in vitro immunogenicity study or in, in vivo immunogenicity study in animal and toxicity study. Clinical data consists of evaluation of clinical data. In clinical data includes evaluation of phase one, phase two, and phase three clinical study data to see the safety, efficacy, and the immunogenicity of the vaccine. Uh, next slide, please. This 
is the safety and efficacy requirement vaccine uh, for AUA approval, the flexibility. The following of two uh, possible illustration of the minimum requirement for safety efficacy data for vaccine AUA approval, namely, first minimum phase two non-clinical and clinical data immunogenicity, which is a prediction of efficacy and safety with an adequate number of subjects based on standardized statistical studies and complete immunogenicity analysis and or interim uh, analysis of efficacy and safety data for at least six months. Second, uh, non-clinical and clinical data for phase three with adequate number of subjects according to statistical calculation and completed immunogenicity analysis and interim data analysis of efficacy and safety for at least three months. Next slide, please. The UA mechanism not only uh, doing in Indonesia, but the W is, uh, is now in WHO, in EMA, and in, in the US FDA. So the flexibility is uh, known in this uh, regulatory tool. Next slide, please. Uh, thank you for your attention. I hope this uh, presentation uh, can be useful for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam, for the for the detailed presentation. Thank you uh, for taking time and gracing us uh, gracing us this program. This would uh, definitely be helpful to the manufacturers of India and Indonesia. Uh, thank you so much for gracing us. We also recognize the presence of uh, the Kadin uh, officials from Kadin uh, Association. Uh, we now moving forward. We request uh, Mr. F. Tito Kusnadi, Chairman. GP Pharmacy to kindly give his address on pharmaceutical business opportunities in Indonesia. Sir, uh, Mr. Tito, I welcome you to kindly give your address. Okay. Your Excellency, Mr. Ambassador of India for Indonesia, that's been Mr. Manoj uh, Kumar. And also Ibu Nova Emelda from the GP, uh, from the uh, PPOM or Indonesian FDA. And then uh, Mr. Uday Paskar, it is from uh, Director General of Pharmaxil. All the members of Pharmaxil and GP Pharmacy who are the participate in this meeting. We like to start directly, but the first of all, I must say thank you very much for the invitation by the Pharmaxil to be joined with this meeting. We want to explain with the topic of the uh, pharmaceutical business opportunity in Indonesia. The outline, the first I want to uh, talk regarding the GP Pharmacy Indonesia and the second Indonesian pharma market and third transformation of the Indonesian pharma industry and the fourth potential business opportunity for pharma uh, company, especially for API and the new product introduction. And the five is, and the fifth is conclusion. Next, okay. Gabungan Perusahaan Farmasi Indonesia or Indonesian Pharmaceutical Association, Indonesian Pharma Association, we have the mission. And the mission, I think, is uh, the first we must support to the government for the medical services and medical, uh, uh, medical care. To serve and then to, to take a care and also uh, for, pro, for protect, uh, for, to protect the members and also with honor and the, to do to the right thing and then to do the thing right and the national interest. We are the members, we have the member 216 pharmaceutical uh, totally in Indonesia 
and uh, 2,700 distribution and 21,000 pharmaceutical and 10, about 10,000 drugstore. And next, summary of Indonesian pharmaceutical market from the 216 pharmaceutical company, company that means four is from government and then 187 is domestic company, domestic industry, and 25 multinational. And 95% of the raw material, 85 to 95% raw material must be imported and around 2.5 billion in the year 2019. And the market share, market share on uh, the year 2019 is approximately 90 trillion rupiah or 6.3 billion US dollar. And yes, and uh, 70, correct, uh, 8 percent, 73 percent value of the market covered by the domestic pharmaceutical uh, company and, and about uh, the rest is uh, by the multinational company. And we are also totally in the ASEAN market. That's mean Indonesia have around 27 to 30, 30 to the 32 percent of the market uh, in Asia in ASEAN. And then uh, current business model: the first we are have the import API and XCPN. That's mean I have already tell is uh, around. 85 to 95% is import. And we try to do the formulation and the manufacturers and then distribution. For the futures business of the model from Indonesia, we like we build the R&D, clinical trial, intermediate and API. And after that, we start for formulation, manufacturers and distributor or export. Next, potential business opportunity for pharma companies in Indonesia. Number one, we are like even government or private company. That means invest for the pharmaceutical raw material or API because we need a lot of API. And also new product introduction related with a high value. And we uh, also like, you know, uh, especially with the, with the uh, material uh, API, we have, and with the government also very interesting to make, to, uh, to build the manufacturer for produce API. Next. Consideration of FDA, APA manufacturer in Indonesia, Indonesian government push for the local APA manufacturers. 95% of the raw material still import from the abroad and allowing 100% foreign investment in, in product of the pharmaceutical API manufacturer, finished product on, on the local partner need, and no, no local partner need anymore like before. Priority technology can be secured. And biopharmaceutical in Indonesia, research-based company has advantage to penetrate in Indonesian market. I think vaccine, product antiretroviral, and then erythropoin product, immunostim, ex inter, and interferon, and then inter, uh, and then human insulin on analog analogs growth hormones all 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 others anti neoplastic and anti inflammation production i think you can look from this uh, list because you can also copy from this list next and also the product we are have a lot here i don't want to tell one by one a bit but this you can get from the from the uh, uh, copy from this uh, presentation. Next. 
opportunity of product biotech product in Indonesia also. I think there's all the list and the presence in the US dollars also you can copy from this because there's a lot of uh, uh, item. Next. Before conclusion, I think I must make the information uh, or maybe I like to give the information and also wrong image that pharmaceutical or medicine price in Indonesia are expensive. Frankly speaking, 70% of the pharmaceutical in the market, the price is really cheap and really a good price compared to other area country in the other area with the Indonesian price. Because we heard sometime, you know, from India, especially with the top people from India always say, that's mean Indonesia pharmaceutical price is still high. Frankly, Indonesia is not high anymore, especially after PPGS or health insurance, all the price of the, especially for the, for the a generic pharmaceutical is going down until 40 to 50 percent. The price is now half price compared to about five or ten years ago. And the conclusion is through NHI, National Health Insurance, drug consumption significant, significant increase approximately three times the, in the vol, volume in unit compared to about five years ago. High demand for the, for the new product introduction, especially for the creatine therapeutic, cer, uh, certain therapeutic yeah, ca catalog, uh, category, as I mentioned already before. Raise, raising of the, mid, uh, of the middle class had awareness and purchasing power and willingness to pay our, our side uh, national health insurance as out-of-pocket money, OTC and herb, vitamin and nat nat natur 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 nutraceutical complements market this real situation drug during the COVID-19 pandemic. pandemic. That means many, many people, they're looking vitamin especially vitamin C, vitamin D, D3 is very, very uh, common and a lot of people then they like and they need. And Indonesia provide more investment, flexibility and incentive for the API investment in Indonesia. That means this is very serious. If the India company especially produce for the API, please come to Indonesia. We are very open. But I think for the finished product, maybe you must think twice or three times or four times because up to now, just only one Indian company is already invest in Indonesia. That means this is just also indicate price in Indonesia low. That means the margin very less. That's not attractive by the company want to invest in Indonesia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Tito Kusnadi, uh, Chairman GP Pharmacy, for the detailed presentation and also outlining the opportunities available for Indian companies and the niche products where uh, the, uh, they and the. Thank you so much uh, for associating with us and then you know supporting us through the all through uh, these years. Thank you so much, sir. Now. Uh, we'll move on to the Q and A since that I think we we have the paucity of time now. We uh, may now request uh, uh, Mr. Narayanan, Councillor Embassy of India, to kindly give his concluding remarks.
Thank you. We also recognize the presence of Mr. Satish Mahatani, Chairman India Committee of Kadin. So now I request uh, Mr. Naren, the Councillor Embassy of India, to kindly give his concluding remarks. Thank you, sir. Salamat siang, uh, Ibu uh, Dan Bapak Sakalian. Uh, good afternoon uh, to everyone. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, JP Pharmacy for collaborating uh, in this uh, B2B with uh, Pharmaxil for holding this event after a hiatus of two years. Last time we did was in a physical format in 2019. Uh, so I would like to specifically thank uh, Pa Tirto and Pa Vincent Harijanto. I would also take this opportunity to thank the India Committee Kadin uh, for facilitating uh, the presence of uh, the pharma industry here through Mr. Satish Mehtani and uh, Mr. Fakir Chand, uh, the Chairman and Deputy Chairman of the India Committee of Kadin. I would specifically like to thank uh, Ibu uh, Nova for her uh, comprehensive presentation to uh, the um, Uh, see, I would like to also refer to the observation of DG Pharmaxil uh, on the, uh, you know, the point that uh, the pharma sector uh, in terms of the bilateral, uh, you know, context is on an upward trajectory. Uh, I recall that in April uh, 2020, when the COVID was at its peak in Indonesia, uh, we had uh, taken proactive measures to reach out to all the stakeholders in India uh, for uh, enabling the uh, drugs uh, such as Oseltamavir, Fabipavir,
See, I was just mentioning the uh, point that, uh, you know, India values its position as the pharmacy of the world, as a vehicle to uh, reach out uh, to the um, international community. As of today, India has uh, donated 58 million uh, vials of uh, COVID vaccine uh, to 71 countries across the world in uh, Latin America, Caribbean, Asia and Africa. So um, we are very uh, confident that today's business meet will take uh, the bilateral relations and the, particularly in the pharma sector uh, from strength to strength. On that note, I would finally want to request Ibu Nova to shed some light on Regulation 10, 2021 of the, of, uh, the PARPU, uh, wherein we have found uh, Ibu Nova, can you please uh, give some more detailed uh, account of Re Regulation 10 vis-a-vis uh, -vis the pharma sector? Thank you very much for everyone for uh, uh, today's uh, you know participation, uh, the Indonesian pharma sector, and I hope that you will have a productive B2B after this session. Thank you.